Hey there, I hope that you had a really brave week. Last week we talked about how um, choosing not to worry is very, very brave. And instead, we don't just stop with not worrying, but instead we go into prayer and asking God for what we need and thanking him for what he's done and what he's going to do. And I just pray that you've had a brave week. Um, I had so much opportunity to worry this week. And so it gave me huge, huge bouts of opportunity to be brave and to choose to pray and pray and pray and pray. And God has been faithful and carrying the heavy of it all for me because I kept giving it over to him. It says, cast your cares on him for he cares for you. And it says to bring him all your heavy and he'll give it, he'll take it and he'll give you his, which is light and easy. And I made that exchange a million times this week and he was faithful every single time. You can't out ask God and he he doesn't tire from hearing from you. So even if you're re-surrendering the same thing or the same person or the same situation or the same fear over and over and over again, he never will ever turn you away because his desire is you getting to be connected and united with you is all he wants. He loves hearing from you. He loves you. Run to him. So this week, we're going to talk about believing brave. And that's the next step after we pray is to believe that God is going to do something He's going to work something out. But usually the believing is married with waiting. (laughs) And I know in our instant gratification society, that just seems like torture. Like, why would God want to make me wait? Like, why? He's God. He could do it right now. When he absolutely could. But he's so much more concerned about you becoming you than he is about your instant gratification. So waiting is not passive. It is not a time where there's nothing happening. It's actually a time where you are becoming. It's for you. The waiting is for you. I remember a very long time ago, he showed me a premature baby connected to all the tubes. And he said, I could let things happen prematurely. But man, the journey is so much harder than it has to be. Like, wait, wait. And I was remembering um, the scripture, Isaiah 40, 31. It says um, that those who wait upon the Lord will find new strength. The waiting is a strengthening process. And I mean, you could look at nature in a hundred ways and see that. That anything that happens before its time usually dies very quickly or struggles its whole life long. And the Lord doesn't want that for you. He doesn't want everything to be a struggle. He doesn't want anything that is meant to be long lasting to shrivel up and die because it happened before it was time. There is a time for everything under heaven. You can trust his timing. It says Isaiah 55, eight through nine, it says at just the right time, God will deliver you. So I'm a hundred percent convinced that God is always on time. And I'm a hundred percent resolved that his timing is always good. It's always for my good, but also for the good of the kingdom. I'm 100% convinced that just because something's taking what seems like a really, really, really long time, doesn't mean God has forgotten about it or that he doesn't care. Those are big fat lies. He absolutely has never forgotten about one prayer you have uttered. You probably have, but he hasn't. It's all recorded and he is working. And I'm 100% certain that he is always good. And you and I, we are always loved. So what am I called to do in the waiting? I'm called to believe. And what am I believing for? I am believing God. I am not believing for a specific 
outcome. I am believing for God to be God. So what does that mean? It means that I'm believing he's doing something far greater than I could ask, think, or imagine. And that comes from Ephesians 3.20. And I am also, in my waiting and believing, I'm determined not to miss what God is doing, looking for what I've decided he ought to do. And here's why. Because God's thoughts are not, they're higher than my thoughts. And his ways, they're higher than my ways. So if I'm looking for what I've thought up or I've surmised should happen, God should do, this is what he ought to do in this circumstance, I might miss what he actually is doing. So how do I believe God and not look for my predetermined, you know, answer to my prayer? Is because i I'm thinking he's going to do something greater than I could ask, think, or imagine because he's higher than me. His thoughts and his ways are higher than my thoughts and my ways. And that's out of Isaiah 55, 8 through 9. So pray brave and then believe. So here's where it's at. Mark eleven twenty four. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. So even before you understand how you're receiving the answer to your prayers, believe that God has already started moving the second you've asked and stand in that and thank him for what he's doing. No matter if I can see it or not, I know you're moving because your word says that when I've asked in your name, I've already received what I've asked for. I trust that at just the right time, you're going to let me in on what you're up to. Matthew 21, 22. If you believe, you will receive whatever you ask for in prayer. We have to believe that God is God and God is good and that he is on the move and he is doing something in response to our connection and unity to him and asking in his name. So first we pray brave and then we stand brave, believing brave for God to be God. God loves to answer prayers in ways that bring the most people into the kingdom. Why? Because he loves this world, John three sixteen. for God so loved the world, and that he desires that none should perish, but all would have everlasting life. Listen to this scripture, 2 Peter 3, 9. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. No, instead, he is patient with you, not wanting any to perish, but for all to come into repentance. And this is what I'm talking about. He might be waiting to give you what you've asked for because there's going to be a right time where it's going to impact the world from heaven to earth in such a way that more people will have an opportunity to come into the kingdom of God because of the answer to your cry to God. He is being patient. He is not being slow. He is being patient because he sees an opportunity for the greater good for the kingdom of God on the earth. That is an honor. It's an honor to be a part of God doing something like that. It might not feel like an honor because you're like, I just want what I want and I want it yesterday. But if we are willing to wait upon the Lord and let him strengthen us and let him deepen our resolve in his goodness and his kindness and his generosity and his perfection, when we receive the answer to what we're waiting for, we are going to be better stewards of it because we will have become more who he created us to be. It's all good. It's all good. This is why we're taught to pray like Jesus prayed, not my will but yours be done. And I feel like that's so anti, you know, counterculture right now. Everybody wants their will, their way, their beliefs. They're, they're trying to force it on everybody else. But Jesus, who could have done that, lived in surrender to the Father. I know that maybe what I'm seeing and thinking isn't the whole picture. But God, you are sovereign and you're on your throne and you are good. And so not my will but yours be done. Jesus, teach us to pray that. Teach us to live that way. So believing is brave because the weight of waiting can get really heavy. 
Proverbs 13, 12 says, hope deferred makes the heart sick. I mean, have you ever just like waited forever? And instead of anything moving in the direction of what you're praying for, it just all seems to be falling apart. But I've heard it said, it's not all falling apart. It's all falling into place. And if we could keep that kind of surrender, like I can't see what's happening but I know that you're good and I know that you're moving and I know that you've heard my pray prayers and you are going to work this together for my good. Then I don't have to worry about how the process unfolds. I can keep my eyes fixed on Jesus, but man, sometimes it makes my heart sick. But Jesus reminds us that he alone is the answer to our troubled hearts and it comes from believing. Listen to this, John 14, 1, don't let your hearts be troubled. You believed in God, now believe in me also. Jesus is inviting us to bring our troubles to him. Let him be the balm for our troubled heart as we have hope deferred. Believing is placing all of it upon him and trusting in his timing, trusting in his plans, trusting in his purpose and his sovereignty and his character that he is always holy, he's always perfect, he's always love, and he's always good. Believing God is relinquishing control of the process, relinquishing control of the outcome, relinquishing the control of the timeline or the answer to our prayers. Remember when it's heavy, the weight of waiting. He says, come unto me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Give me your yoke, which is heavy and burdensome. And here, take mine, which is light and easy. And you know, we can make that exchange as often as we need. If it gets heavy a million times a day, run to him a million times a day and say, whoops, I picked it back up. I'm choosing again to surrender. You can't do it too often. He will always take the load from you. He is always there for you. You are never alone. It's not up to you in and of yourself to have victory over all the things. He's with you and he's for you and he is willing to take the lion's share. He's willing to do all the heavy lifting. You get to rest in him. You get to trust in him. You get to believe brave in him. If we study Hebrew 11, it's called the Hall of Faith. And we read about incredible faith from people like Abraham and Sarah, Jacob, Moses, Noah, Joshua, Rahab, David, Daniel, and others. And we read how through their believing, they conquered kingdoms. They gained what was promised by God. They shut the mouths of lions. They quenched fiery flames. They escaped their enemies. They let their weakness be turned to strength and they received back their dead through resurrection. I mean, amazing testimony of what was possible through their believing. But we also know if we go back and actually read their stories, that none of their journeys were flawless and none of their faith was perfect. And so we can be encouraged that even our flawed and imperfect journeys with God, that we can have powerful things unlocked through our believing, just like they did. Believing is a key that unlocks the depths of you becoming the youest you. If you read their stories, none of them thought that they were who God told them they were. It was a process. It was a journey. And as they said, yes, and they came back to him and said, yes, and they came back to him and said, yes, and they came back to him and said, yes, that's why they're in the hall of faith, not because they're perfect or without blemish or spot. It's because they kept coming back to God and saying yes to what he said, believing what he said, and then they allowed him to work through their lives. You and I can do that same thing moment by moment, day by day. 
and you becoming the you is you that you can be, you know, one layer at a time walking with God, just like all of these people. They were just people in the Bible did. That brings your creator so much pleasure and delight and joy. Psalm 18, 19 says, he brought me into a broad place and he rescued me because he delighted in me, not because I deserved it. Not because I was good enough or I had enough faith or I was, you know, so amazing. It was because he delights in me. He delights in you. Then Psalm 147, 11 says, but the Lord takes pleasure in those who fear him, those who hope in his steadfast love. He takes pleasure in you. You are his delight. And then Hebrews 12, 1 and 2 talks about Jesus going to the cross while we were still sinners. And it said, for the joy set before him, he journeyed to the cross. You are his joy. He saw you and he said, you know what? I'm going to go all the way. I'm going to lay down my life because I can see who it's going to hit, who it's going to impact. And I love them. I want to do this for them. And that brought him enough joy to keep putting one foot in front of the other all the way through death, burial, resurrection, and ascension for us. What great victory. What great love. So knowing that we're so loved and that we're his pleasure and his delight and his joy, when we do have unbelief, we know it's safe to come to him because he loves us so much. And you know what? We will. We will have times where we're like, you know what? I've been believing for this thing for a long time and nothing's happening. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I don't want to think about it. It's just too painful. We can, we can say that to him. We can bring that to him. It's better to be honest with God than to try to take control in our own hands and decide how things ought to go and, and by when. That's our other option, right? If we don't come to him, we take control. Or we enter into denial, pretend that it's not happening. And that's also, we talked last week, how dangerous that can be. And sometimes it just seems like you know, I know everything works out for everyone else, but it is just not, nothing just ever works out for me. Everything is just hard for me. And I just really believe that is one of the biggest lies of the enemy because you only are privy to the front row seat of how hard things are for you, but not for everyone else. And everybody has their own flavor of hard. So do not be deceived in believing it's all harder for you. That is a lie to keep you isolated and to make you feel defeated or maybe unseen or unloved. And it is not true. Jesus showed us how to suffer connected with God. So if we're willing, we can bring our heart to the Lord and we can let other people bring their heart to the Lord, but we don't need to waste our energy or time comparing hard. So the brave thing to do here is modeled for us in Mark 9, 24. It was a father praying for a child and um, Jesus was like, do you believe? And the father said, I do believe, but help me with my unbelief. Like I'm both, okay? I believe most of the time. Isn't that just so human? But look, it's in the Bible that we can say, help me with my unbelief belief. And then we see it again. And look how kindly in John 20, 27, where Jesus goes to Thomas, who's doubting that Christ is the resurrected Lord. And he goes to him, he connects with him. He says, look, put your fingers right here. Do you see the holes in my hands and reach out your hand and put them into my side? Stop doubting and believe like it's me. I'm the one you love. I'm here. 
and I'm resurrected. I died for you and I rose for you. You know, Jesus came close in response to Thomas's doubt. It wasn't a place of disconnect or disgust for Christ. It was an opportunity for a deeper intimacy. It was like, hey, Thomas, come closer. I want to invite you into the places I've been broken. In fact, if you let the blood from my broken places touch your broken places, you'll be made whole. Draw near. Reach out. Let my love for you restore your hope. We don't have to fake believing <laughs> when you don't have any believing. Be brave enough to say, help me in my unbelief. And let his broken places, the places where he shed his blood, touch your broken places. And let his blood restore you and restore your hope and restore your faith and restore your believing. John James 4, 8 says, Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. Believing is about getting to know God and then resolving that regardless of the process or the pain or the timing, that he is indeed who he says he is, and he will do what he says he will do. That someone, um, I'm sorry, he is faithful to keep his promises, and that's Psalm 145. 13, and he will finish what he began. And that's Philippians 1, 6. <clears throat> Choosing to draw near when your believing needs an extension is super brave and is pleasing to God. Hebrews eleven six 6 says, without faith, it's impossible to please God because anyone who comes to him must believe he exists and that he rewards those who earnestly seek him in your belief or your unbelief seek him draw near to him all he ever wants is you <laughs> and he wants to give you all of himself in return there could be no greater reward than that so this week let's be brave by asking ourselves and asking the lord some questions um some things I thought of was, what is it right now I am believing God for? Like, what is, what's the impossible thing that I'm believing God to move in? And if I'm not, maybe asking God, is there something you want me to like really be pressing in for, praying over, believing you to work a miracle in? Do I need help with any unbelief? Like, is there anything, God, that I've taken control back over because... It was taken too long um, or I didn't like the process or is there anything I've denied because it's too painful and it's just all unbelief and I need to ask you to help me with my unbelief and then there was just this other thought I had is just asking God what are you speaking over me like right now in this today right now moment and will you help me to believe what you're saying right now about me even if it's not what I'm seeing or thinking is true about me. So Father, I just, I thank you for the gift of believing. I thank you for the gift of faith. I ask that you would increase, Holy Spirit, you would come and fill us up afresh and increase our faith, increase our believing. Help us to have eyes to see this week where we um, need a miracle and where we can lean in and press in and ask you to do what only you can do. Where are things that we've just settled for? Like, well, that's just the way it is. But you want more for us. Help us to um, be stirred up a little bit where we've gotten complacent and, and believe you to do the more. There is always more with you. You are the God of more. Show us where in our lives we're primed and ready for a testimony of your wonder-working power. And God, if there's any place in our lives where we have stopped believing or we've looked away because it was too painful and taken too long, I ask that you would help us have courage to bring you our unbelief and get some truth from you and let our broken places touch your brokenness 
that your body was broken for us and that your blood was shed for us and help us to receive your blood in all the broken places that feel like they need resurrection power. I thank you that your word says that we have res the resurrection power that raised Christ Jesus from the dead lives in us. Hallelujah. Just touch every dead and dwindling place in our lives and bring it back to life and life abundant. That's what you died to give us. And Father, I pray that this week you would also speak over us. What you're saying is true about each one of us in this right now moment. Help us to hear you and not to immediately go, oh, no, 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 that's not me. But to go, um, hmm, that's curious. How are we going to do that? Where do we begin? What can we undo so that we can become what you're saying I already am? I trust you with the process. I trust you with my life and with my future and with my purpose. And I trust your plans because I know that you are always good and I'm always loved. Help us to live surrendered. Help us to step into believing every time we realize we've stepped out. Help us to run to you with all of our unbelief. Help us to be brave believers this week. We need you to do any of this. With you, it's all possible. Without you, nothing is possible. So I just praise you and thank you that we are in you and you are in us and we are in the Father. And there's nothing, anything in heaven or on earth could ever do to separate us from your perfect love, which cast out all fear. You're so good. You're so good and worthy of all glory and honor and praise, both now and forevermore. And we ask these things according to your blood and your spirit and your power and your holy, perfect, wonderful, saving, beautiful, majestic name, Lord Jesus.